So there are a lot of signs that the market is crashing, or at least that's what some data shows and definitely what a lot of new news outlets are saying. Uh, but before that, let's talk a little bit about Moomoo. Okay, so this is a quick one. For Moomoo first-time users, you can get a lot of benefits. So make sure to use our code FIRE24 to get a 40 ringgit cash reward. And there's also multiple rewards that you can get if you deposit 1,000, 10,000, and even 30,000. So the rewards are all displayed in the screen. And we're going back to the market crash video. All right, so um, now there's a chart here. And the things that are shaded... Uh, these lines, right, um, indicate a recession. And what we're trying to figure out here is how does the Fed funds rate, which is the interest rates determined by the Federal Reserve in America, can correlate with a recession. So what we can see here is typically a recession happens when, ironically, the Fed start to cut rates. Yes. Uh, the theory is always when the market is overheating, uh, sorry, when the market is um, overheated, then the US federal funds, uh, federal rates will drop. Uh, but what we see is a little bit different. It's what happens is when it hits the peak mm. and then the government uh, or the Fed start to drop it. And then a few months or even years later, only a recession follows and yes. of course each recession is quite different yes right in terms of size yeah. the one in the early 90s and the early 2000s look very similar but then you can see the 2008 one of course that was a big one and then the recent covid one i believe this yes. one is very really small yeah so if you see right too busy to find stock ideas check out fire pro to shortcut your research time and effort by 90 percent 10% off link in the comments and description. The previous crashes, they all have like a catalyst. So in the 90s, is your tech bubble, uh, at, hey, sorry, your dot-com bubble. In your 2000, hey, sorry, your 2000 is your tech, your dot-com bubble. Your 90s, this one is, uh, this one I'm not too sure what's the peak. Is this, this is the Great Recession? Uh, the, sorry, the Great Depression? Oh uh, no, so that would be Gulf War. Uh, Gulf War, 1991, okay, okay. yeah. Okay, uh, in 2008, that one is your global financial crisis, yeah. then this has COVID. So right now, we don't know what's the catalyst for 2024. Yeah. Yeah, this one is still a question mark, but potentially there may be a recession if we look at historically uh, this data. Now, you can see that the money market fund also has been hitting at an all-time high. Uh, a lot of investors are parking their money there. The reason also is because the interest rate right now is around like 5%. So it's quite an attractive view. I mean, if you compare back to like the 90s, right? The 90s, I think your money market, the rate also is around like 6%, 8%, pretty high up over there. So your risk-free rate is essentially getting higher and higher. So if you want to invest in risky, riskier asset like stocks or maybe even uh, crypto, uh, it needs to match or even perform better than the risk-free rate, which is about 5%. So, uh, but you can see that over here, I highlighted over here, which is in 2019, uh, there was also a slight market drop uh, during 2018 or actually late 2018 to early 2019. And that is also have to do with the trade war between mm -hmm. China and uh, the US. So if you notice, right, the uh, effective Fed fund rate also did peak over here before it dropped. Uh, basically, they cut. Uh, and then the money market fund also, the sizes also start to like, uh, they stop a little bit at the peak over here before it further rise okay. up. Yeah, so there's a, Probably there's a catalyst over here that is stating that uh, the upcoming one is probably because of trade war. I mean, it's evident already. You can see that yep. Canada, US, Europe, China, these four are just fighting together. And yeah. you're not into mention even Russia also and EU. So a lot of things, uh, there's a protectionist act uh, going on. And then uh, then we have the 10 to treasury yield. So right now it's like not inverted anymore. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, when it starts to like go back to the po uh, the positive yeah. uh, area here. So potentially... Typically, it takes... Uh, I mean, if you're going to take um, the previous... The, let's call it four. If it, it just you can eyeball it, all right? Uh, it will still take one to two years, yeah. right? Before it, it will take a, while. A, a crash comes. But then you have to be mindful as well that if you look you know, in the 80s, it's not as clear as the next few ones. The next few ones are very clear, right? But the one in the 80s is during the inversion it happened. Yeah, I think because that back then, the Fed don't know what to do. Maybe. It's, like yeah. it's the first time, uh, like, they yeah. experience. Then the war also, everything happened. Correct. So, yeah, so it, that's where, <laughs> sorry, that's, yeah, and that, that coincided with 
Paul Walker, which was a new interest rate regime. And so you can argue that we are also in some sort of new interest rate regime because uh, we are raising rates and Paul Walker is raising rates. So yeah, unprecedented times. Okay, uh, this one is also another the PMI. Recently, they just announced a few data. If you look at the latest one, PMI is down below yeah. 50 for United States and also for China. China has been down for the longest time. Uh, and if you look at the 2018 level, right, uh, it's actually mimicking about the same. Uh, that is also because of the trade war. La. So when there is like a global trade war, everyone just don't benefit uh, just because cost is actually much higher to do. And you are basically not creating value. You're not exchanging value around the economy. La. So that's why you are seeing there is some sort of like weakness in the market right now. Just simply because of this uh two big giants are fighting each another. Uh, but the interesting thing is that this oil is dropping also. Uh, there's an oversupply in oil at the moment, which resulted a weakness in Brent uh, last day financially. You can see the price actually tanked to 70 USD, 71 USD. And right now, the OPEC also did say that, you know, maybe they need to cut some production so that they can keep the prices up. And I, hear, I highlighted here also, this is during the global trade war. So funny thing is that this also, it's uh, about the same. So we don't have a sharp decline in oil prices, but a lot of analysts are predicting right now that uh, the decline will be around like uh, 60 USD. It will hit like around 60 USD per barrel. So yeah, we will see whether it will mimic the same sort of like a magnitude in terms of uh, the 2018-2019 trade war level. Okay, so the S&P 500 is still looking decent. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, even though after, uh, all these things are happening. Uh, but if you take a look at 2019 again, the 2018 and 19, the trade war, uh, there was a drop, like a 13% downfall. And right now, the entire S&P 500 is actually being weighted by these, I, I would say just these top five companies, especially NVIDIA. Uh, so right now, if let's say these top five com companies cannot uh, release good earnings or good future prospects, right? Or they are holding back in their capex. Uh, definitely, there will be some sort of correction in S and P five hundred. Uh, we just don't see it now, but uh, maybe in the next few months or even maybe just one year, uh, there will be maybe some sort of minor correction. But over the past, I think one month it has been down a little bit compared to today. Yeah, a, a little bit only. Yeah, it's not just a, a little bit. Yeah, it's still just at like the top. flattish. Yeah. Okay, so this is how you can prepare for yep. this market crash if. It does happen. Okay, so if you are more than 50% uh, invested, uh, the strategy that you can do is review your holdings. So you want to look at whether your company is, whether is it recession-proof or not, whether their business, how uh, severe will their business be impacted because of a recession? If assuming their customer, uh, does, uh, I mean, does their customer have any good cash flow or not? Do they still actively spend CapEx or spending expanding their business during yep, hard yep. times? So you want to review if let's say, the customer profile is strong, uh, their business is still good, cash flow is very healthy, they still can pay out dividends, then I think your portfolio it should be okay. Lah. Shouldn't mm -hmm. be uh, uh, much of a problem. But if let's say, if it's the reverse, then consider selling some of the holdings that you have. So if you are 30% to 50%, so this one is more of like a 50-50 because you have enough gunpowder to actually withstand, assuming if this yeah. happened. So if the companies that you like, you already have your grocery list, like what MJ mentioned, your watch list, uh, that would be a good time for you to shop for companies that you like. And yeah, when valuations are getting beaten down, that's where you can get uh, even a more cheaper price uh, as it was before. Now, this is the interesting part because if you are 0% invested, well, that means you're 100% uh, convinced that the market crash is here. Uh, also, this one is a very risky move because you never know whether yeah. so what there we, is a, yeah. What I always share with my clients in my mentorship, one-on-one -on -one mentorship programs, which by the way, if you guys want to apply, links in the comments or description. Um, when it comes to the amount of cash that you hold, there are many ways you can go about it. Uh, whether you want to use a mathematical approach, whether you want to use a market cycle approach, whatever, right? But the way I usually do it in terms of, you know, simple, easy to understand kind of uh, approach is portfolio should always reflect your psychology. So what I mean is this. Let's say if once you've assessed the market right, and you say that, okay, I think the likelihood of a recession uh, is this plus um, I would be comfortable seeing my portfolio drop by this amount, right? 
that's my cash amount. So let's say if I have, I think the market is going to crash 50-50, I really don't know. Then your portfolio should be 50% cash. Mm. Right? Makes sense, right? So then you can take advantage. Yeah. Um, but again, depends on your psychology. If you don't mind the, you know, ups and downs, like for example, our Fire Pro portfolio, uh, at the peak, it was uh, 60%. And then as of August, it dropped to 40%. Uh, percent in terms of returns yes okay. in terms of returns yeah. uh, not the cash um how much cash do we have on average five percent uh yeah right so five percent cash we don't mind right but that doesn't mean that's you so you need to know yourself now one area i typically do not uh help or recommend to people is to have zero percent cash unless you have no interest to invest in the stock market and i'll tell you why um, most of the time, people cannot predict uh, when a crash is coming, specifically. Because it's no use saying, well, I think the next five years a crash is coming. That's not really, you, you know, that's like saying in the next five years, there's probably an earthquake that's going to happen on planet Earth. Most yeah, probably yeah. will, right? Yeah. Or that's like predicting uh, there's going to be volcanic activity in Indonesia. You know? It's not exactly a useful prediction. Uh, it's only useful if you know specifically when, or at least a very tiny range, right? It's going to happen in 2025, uh, Q4 or Q3. So that's one challenge people have really. The second challenge is even when it crashes, people are not ready to buy because they don't have the grocery list. So that's the second challenge. They don't do the work. They spend all their brain powers on when the crash is coming not in actually identifying a short list of stocks to buy when the crash comes. Third, <clears throat> they do not, people do not or are not aware or potentially not ready of for how long the crash can happen. Yeah. You see a crash come, but then you say, well, I think it's going to crash some more or rather it's going to crash longer. So then you wait, you wait. You wait too long, it goes back up. But you go in too early, then you're like, hey, it crashed again. And it keeps crashing after six months, 12 months. Then it's like, where, where's the rebound? Yeah. And then the fourth last one, which is linked to the third, is people cannot predict how much more it will crash. Typically, a crash is defined as from the peak to the current price are about negative 20%. So let's say a negative 20%. And they say, you know what? I'm going to buy at negative 30%. Okay, so it drops to 30%. Somehow, you buy it, right? You buy it, then it drops another 30%. Yeah. So even if you didn't know a crash is coming or whatever, there's so many of other things that will affect your psychology. Now, how does this relate to the 0%? What I'm trying to say here is, if you're interested in investing in the stock market, 0% cash sounds good in theory, but in practice, it's very, very difficult. In fact, it just reflects your... Uh, lack of preparation, it reflects your inability. Uh, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for you to make a decision. Of course, you can get lucky and I hope you do get lucky. But my experience is always that uh, people misjudge crashes, how long, how much it crashed, and they're not ready when the crash comes. Yeah. Just make sure that you prepare like a gunpowder so that you can like deploy by yeah. batches. Uh instead of just like going all in into just a few counters. Too busy to find stock ideas? Check out Fire Pro to shortcut your research time and effort by 90%. 10% off link in the comments and description. Yeah, so that is what you need to do and what our big funds are doing. So interestingly, now the big funds are looking at consumer stocks instead of bank. So they are rotating here and there. Uh, if so if you notice, right, some of the consumer counters like your CCK, your... Um, uh, your Farm fresh and also even Mr. DI will also start to like turn up a little bit. And currently, a 99 speed mark, that which is up for listing, uh, is also going up. So, right now, the big funds are all you know focusing on this particular sector uh, because they see uh, number one is of course mm -hmm. the ringgit strengthening, and number two is because there's just no elsewhere to deploy uh, because they think that the bank's valuation are high for them. Um, so, what are the other alternatives besides telco? Uh, and also besides utility. Uh, so consumer comes into mind and that is where they are parking their money. But whether they will start to rotate again, uh, that is also another question because I think the big funds are already happy with their 
investment yeah, that's returns. Another thing, yeah. yeah, that's another thing. So, and but we mentioned this the and, past couple of episodes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a year end already, so they can just collect their performance bonus uh, and call it a year. Okay, so as for how are we positioning in this market uh, cycle, you can see that right now we're actually in the anxiety phase. <laughs> yeah. yeah, somewhat around there. Uh, so pers- I'll share mine first. Uh, personally, I have not been doing any uh, short-term trading already. So this one is totally stopped. Uh, usually last time when I was like reading for earnings or even quarterly's update, right, there will be some ideas that is interesting. But right now there's just zero or even maybe just one or two ideas that ca- uh, caught my attention. So that's that already for trading. Uh, for investment-wise, uh, I am 99% invested. Uh, however, my portfolio is more towards on the uh, cash flow side of uh, businesses and also the business that can give out dividends. So even though during hard times, they can actually uh, you know, give shareholder value. So th- those are the companies that I'm looking for uh, at the moment. And yeah. So that is my take. What about yours? Yeah, so for myself, the focus is on... Uh, well, right now, I'm about 20% cash, right? Uh, mainly because I've <clears throat> sold uh, some companies for certain profits. You can say profit-taking, but that's not because I think a crash is coming. It's just I think the companies that I own, or at least part of them, are closer to fair value. Um, I still think they're undervalued, but it's just closer to fair value in terms of a recession yeah you know statistically we are closer to a recession right than uh, since covid i mean statistically right time passes so uh yeah i do think that you know in the next one or two years i won't be surprised to see uh, a market downturn how big i don't know no one knows as far as protecting the portfolio goes again it's it should be you know, based on companies that people are going to spend money on their products or services regardless of a uh, downturn. The question is how much they're going to spend. Um, not easy to find out, but, you know, that's that's my my positioning uh, right now. Yeah. So, I guess that's, yeah. Yeah, and also you need to know that uh, EPF withdrawal and also CVO serve. Uh, servant salary height is going to be coming soon already. I mean, end of yeah. this month. There might be another uh, yeah. positive yeah. bounce for the for market. Malaysia, for yeah, Vietnam. for Malaysia specifically. So for the US side, uh, that one we're not too sure. But if uh, our basically our final take is just stay invested and keep some gunpowder so that in case there's any weakness, you can take advantage of it. Now, if you want to know what companies that we think can uh, maybe sustain a potential recession, you can check out our Fire Pro write up. Yeah. Uh, our portfolio, even though it is at a very gloomy market, our portfolio is still up 40%. Yep. Uh, Catalyst Port, that was 13%. If you look at the holdings, are still pretty red because I'm trimming and there's lesser of a trading activity going on. Boy portfolio is going strong. Uh, the last I checked is actually now up 6%, uh, thanks to certain counters that actually huh. reported great results. Yeah, that's quite surprisingly also. Uh, and they are also paying dividends, obviously, because this is a boring portfolio. So if you're a conservative investor or you like dividends, you want to check out the boring portfolio. And yeah, so if you want to get a taste, you want to know more about how you write up uh, on our companies, how we do analysis, how we do risk management, all those kind of things, you can see the free sample. The link will be in the description and comments below. With that said, we we'll see you in the next bye video. Bye-bye.